This episode shows the three Master Red Rangers showing the ninjas how to unlock their animal spirits. Eventually, when the ninjas succeed at this, we get a reference to the MMPR movie as they get a ceremony explaining what the animals mean. Sarah is the panda, fearsome and unstoppable. Haley is the white tiger, courageous and enlightened. Calvin is the tortoise, enlightened but slower than others. Brody is the falcon, burning with pride. Preston is the dragon, noble and mystical. And Levi's the piranha. But before they explain the significance, oh no, Pincher's attacking again. He attempts to hold Coco hostage, but oh my, she can actually fight. And really well, along with the ninjas. She claims that she trains with her grandfather. After Pincher is gigantified, they try summoning their animal spirits, but because Levi still doesn't know what the piranha symbolizes, it doesn't really work, so they just summon their normal zords. But oh no, Pincher tries sinking them into the ground. But oh yeah, the Lion Fortress can fly. And at the end, we see Shane and Arako getting taken out by a mysterious, invisible assailant. Levi's still shaking up about the piranha thing and attempts to go find Merrick. Not knowing where he lives, he asks Dan, who says to do as he does and go where the wind takes him. Meanwhile, the ninjas are fighting Tynamon and a firework monster. Levi eventually comes across Odious in disguise, who gives him the Crimson Katana, who she says might help him with the wolf. But oh no, it only makes it worse! Ah! Meanwhile, Tynamon apparently can shrug off a final attack. Then Levi in wolf form hops in and starts attacking the rangers. There's a lot of the rangers being like, you gotta remember who you are. Until Dan finally appears and tells them that the piranha, it symbolizes that it's powerful, fearsome, yet it's misunderstood. Levi actually hears this and it starts getting him thinking. We cut inside his head. Instead of running from or fighting the wolf, he talks to it. With little words, you can tell that the wolf is more like a real scared animal. He only lashes out at people because it's all he knows. He just wants to be in control of Levi so he can get out and live his life. Eventually, the two come to an agreement to share the body. And then the Star Ninja theme starts playing, and he turns back to normal. The wolf has now become a new power-up for Levi, the Lone Wolf Ranger. Think of it as kind of a possession like in Kamen Rider Deno of the Imagen. With the wolf, later given the name Aiden, taking over Levi. He solos the contestant and even Tynamon. They fight some Skulligators. And the Rangers add the Crimson Katana to their arsenal. But then we see Merrick fighting someone and he turns uninvisible and what? It's Tommy! He's the one who's been kidnapping all the legendary rangers. We open with the villains arguing. Tynamon yells at Odious for giving the rangers the Crimson Katana, and Odious yells at Tynamon for getting so easily defeated. But then suddenly, Galvanex is ready from the healing pod, and it's kind of like in Resurrection of F, and the ship's all shaking, and he just erupts out, and he's super PO'd. Cosmo's cheering at Galvanex's side, happy day he's back. Tynamon immediately bows to him. Odious bows and pretends that she's innocent as Badana goes to her side, and Sledge's crew is just kind of standing there awkwardly. Cosmo states that he's the only loyal one here and that Odious was the one who tried destroying you, and he was the one who tried healing you. But Galvanax is giving Odious one shot to prove that she's still useful. Cosmo quickly informs him about the cursed shurikens. Then Galvanax, to give Sledge's crew on his side, tosses one into Sledge, turning him into Super Sledge. Meanwhile, the ninjas, they're training or whatever, but then are visited by Heckle. He briefly explains who he is, says that there are bounty hunters from his dimension, now in their dimension, that multiple dimensions exist. He's here to help them, and he has some friends coming to help them soon. But as he's done explaining, oh no, an army of small fries attack. 
But luckily, the Dino Charge Rangers appear. There's a little bit of fighting until Odious appears and tells Tynamon that she made Monty make her a little device mixed with some of her magic who will unleash their inner darkness and mind control them. She uses a heckle, which of course turns him back into Snide. And yes, we're using this suit for Snide instead of Zeltrax Maximus. Because that was just really dumb. Snide's like, ah, oh, it's great to be back. And he realizes he has a morpher, so he uses it. Spino Charger, engaged. Energize. At least the power. Spinosaurus. Dino Charge, Dark Blue Ranger. Snide as the Dark Blue Ranger just walks through the dinos. As Super Sledge just kind of tears through the ninjas. Defeated, the ninjas help everyone escape. And Snide's like, whatever, we'll find them. Regroup, the Dino Charge Rangers explain what's going on, who everyone is. And of course we have interactions between Coda and Levi. And it's super weird because they're the same actors. They're like, what? And Boom explains that they must be dimensional counterparts. Of the endless possibilities of alternate dimensions, there are possibilities that people just kind of look alike or were born in different eras, like you two must be. Coda notes that he could never see himself with such short hair. And Levi notes that he could never have seen himself without such style and smell so bad. This is interrupted by, oh no, the Spinozords attacking. So the Dino Rangers send their Zords after him. Yes, they also went to this other dimension with their Zords. Go with it. But then Odeus uses the mind control thing and possesses James, Philip, and even Boom. Oh no! And now they have two Megazords, as Odeus unleashes the Odeus Megazord with it. 